I am Sudeep Jha. I am here in the physics faculty of School of Sciences of Indira Gandhi National Open University. I am in this system since last 30 plus years and uh, as you may be aware, IGNU is a pioneer national open university in the field of open and distance learning. Now why multidisciplinary higher education is needed? Now the most important uh, reason for uh, making our undergraduate programs multidisciplinary is that job markets now uh, don't require people who are specialized in a single area of study or discipline. They want people to have a multiple skills simultaneously when they come out as a graduate. The secondly, this uh, straight jacketing and then narrowing down our undergraduate programs quite early into arts, science and commerce, they say that uh, let us break this barrier and give the option to students to pick up courses as per their interest from a basket of courses which will consist of courses from arts, humanities, social sciences and sciences and commerce. So that liberty uh, can be given and this uh, multidisciplinarity uh, actually as Professor Pandey said that now the emerging knowledge is being created at the interface of mul uh, two or more disciplines. Pure disciplines research is of course there but the societal demand uh, uh, is such that two or more disciplines have to work together to solve the emerging problems of the society. And uh, the outcome of such uh, interaction, interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary higher education in the past is the evolving disciplines like women studies, uh, gender and development, energy studies. For example, being a person from science background, I can say that energy studies is a, a evolving into a new area where people from background of mathematics, chemistry, physics, engineering. They all come together, sit together and identify a problem and they all come with their own skill sets and knowledge base. So uh, that kind of an interaction has given rise to new disciplines like energy studies, public policy, Asian studies, Canadian studies, etc. So the whole idea is that uh, the higher education should be essentially aimed toward solving the problems of the society rather than just uh, for the sake of acquiring knowledge in itself. So uh, with this uh, objective in mind, the NEP puts a, a very high priority to multidisciplinary higher education. Now the problem. Uh, uh, the point here is as a teacher you will know that okay that is fine, I do agree, I accept the arguments in favor of making our higher education multidisciplinary. Then uh, next question will be what will be the implication of uh, making our uh, higher education multidisciplinary. Now there are inst uh, implications on uh, various front. First is uh, the institutional implication as I mentioned that institutional implications is that universities and colleges have to become multidisciplinary rather than unitary. What is the implication for a teacher? For a teacher the implication is that you have to sit down in the committee in a group of uh, teachers comprising uh, faculty from all disciplines and then look at the curriculum of our undergraduate programs how it can be made more multidisciplinary in the sense that how our students will have many options to pick up courses from any discipline he or she likes. Of course, the overall structure, it is not free for all, overall structure will be there which uh, we expect any time very soon from UGC. But within that overall structure, the student will have freedom and institution should be in a position to uh, provide that opportunity to students so that they can pick up courses of their choice. So that is the implication for a teacher and third implication is for uh, the policy makers and funding agencies that how to uh, streamline the funding for research so that colleges are also encouraged to take up projects and do meaningful research in their respective area as well as in the areas of interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary uh, disciplines. And uh, another important uh, 
uh, aspect of NEP 2020 is that they are saying that if someone is getting into undergraduate program for four years, then uh, and for some reason, or good or bad, for some reason he or she wants to quit after completing let's say one year or two years. So uh, will it not be uh, prudent to give them certification for the effort they have made during those one year that is two semesters or two years. So that uh, basic genesis uh, has given rise to the idea of multiple entry and multiple exit in the uh, new uh, four year undergraduate program proposed in the NEP. So at the end of the lecture I will touch upon this aspect also what are its implications uh, for a teacher, for institution and for students. Now uh, what are the different, once uh, you think of an undergraduate program, so what are the components which uh, NEP proposes uh, should be a part of undergraduate program. I will again focus on the undergraduate program. So these are the major components of any undergraduate curriculum which uh, NEP uh, thinks that university should think and work out a, a structure for their undergraduate program. First is nature and type of courses you can see that first is the traditional discipline specific courses. Now discipline specific courses have been further categorized I will come to that later. Another is the vocational and skill courses. On the right hand column you will see that uh, whatever may be the credit, uh, creditization is another aspect of NEP which was earlier available only with professional universities. IGNU is an exception, IGNU as an university started this credit system way back uh, since its inception. So I will come to that also later. But whatever the total credit is for the entire undergraduate program, 50% of roughly, these are all rough estimates. But uh, these numbers will give you an idea that uh, what it takes to make your undergraduate program multidisciplinary and holistic. 50% weightage goes to our traditional discipline specific courses. 16 credit worth of vocational and skill courses is a compulsory requirement for any undergraduate program. Third category and component of this new, new uh, multidisciplinary holistic uh, uh, undergraduate program is uh, life skill courses, environmental studies, value-based courses and global citizenship education. So this is a new component which was earlier missing uh, from uh, the structure of most of the undergraduate programs in our country across the universities. Fourth component is uh, field projects, internship and apprenticeship that is aimed towards uh, two objectives. One is that they want that undergraduates should get an experience and live in a feel of the workplace that will come through internship and apprenticeship as well as with the society. As on date, uh, by a structure, no undergraduate program in Visages except for uh, say bachelors in social work where they have this component as a compulsory component for the students to visit the, the sites and society. But now the NEP requests the higher education institution to make it a compulsory component so that our undergraduates are exposed to the field, work, field of work where they will enter in the future as well as they will they have some feel for the society, particularly with massive urbanization across the country, our last segment of student population at undergraduate level have no exposure to the actual uh, hinterland of our uh, country. So that uh, can be incorporated, that must be incorporated by way of field project irrespective of the fact that the student is pursuing science, arts or, so, or commerce or social work. Uh, it's not necessary that field work for a science student has to be related to that. That, that uh, leeway will be given. The intent of this component I have explained just now. And fourth is of course, if you are planning to have a four year under undergraduate program, this four year undergraduate program incidentally has an exit after three years. That I will discuss at the level when I discuss multiple entry and exit. 
So in the nutshell, these are the five major components of holistic and multidisciplinary interdisciplinary undergraduate program as it has been envisaged in the NEP 2020. As a follow up to NEP 2020 policy document, uh, there had been certain draft documents from UGC. So this listing I have culled out from those draft documents. The final document is still awaited. I hope it should come very soon. But these major components are the NEP uh, in vision, which has been translated into a kind of a document for discussion among teachers and higher education policy makers. So the next is uh, uh, what is the typical structure and now this slide is important because what they say that uh, don't ask students to decide on what disciplines they want to study on the very first day of their admission, right. What they say that let first three semesters be a, an open house kind of a thing, let people, let a student study courses from different disciplines and different areas and let them have exposure to certain compulsory courses in humanities and social sciences and sciences, some basic courses on mathematical and computational thinking analysis, creative expressions, vocational education. Now once they are done with this uh, and at the end of three semesters that is one and a half years, then ask them that what are the disciplines you liked, you feel more comfortable about and you would like to major in a discipline. So see here the, the flexibility and the choice to the student is huge. Once he or she has spent three years, uh, one and a half years, sorry, with the institution, then only he or she has to make up his or her mind that what disciplines now they will like to study in detail, meaning thereby they will have like to have more credits in that discipline. And that comes after, at the stage of fourth, fifth and sixth semester. After sixth semester, they can exit with a graduate degree and if they have certain achievements in terms of performance, then they will be allowed to pursue fourth year which will be quite research oriented and they can go for four year undergraduate program with research as well as honors. So honors and research degrees will not be open to one and all depending upon your performance in the past six, uh, uh, in the six semesters. Uh, you will be either allowed or given an honorable exit with an undergraduate degree in your hand with minor and major disciplines. Now uh, these are little uh, complex uh, uh, nomenclature they have adopted. It's just a matter of uh, getting into those documents. Uh, I will refer to one document which is very a good document that is NEP 2020. It has come from UGC. You can refer to that document. It's available on UGC site. Another equally important document in the in the light of restructuring the curricula of four-year undergraduate program in the light of NEP 2020 is National Higher Education Qualification Framework. This is another document from UGC. So these two documents are quite important, and uh, they give you some feel about the thinking which is going on. Uh, to translate the vision of NEP uh, 2020 into uh, a real concrete structure of four year undergraduate program. UGC is working on it. These are draft documents. I think uh, you must, uh, uh, and, and the final will not be diametrically uh, different from what is there in the draft. So you can have refer to these documents, this will give you some idea. They have categorized the discipline specific courses into uh, four categories, discipline major core, discipline major elective, and then the interdisciplinary major core, interdisciplinary major elective, and discipline manner courses. So for a discipline, suppose you are a teacher of history or physics, then your concern here is that you will have to think in terms of having some major courses the as per the credit requirement and some minor courses from your discipline. And that will be uh, for someone who is uh, planning to study from fourth semester to sixth semesters and onwards your discipline. So that minimum number of credits uh, the courses are to be designed for 
getting into the four year undergraduate program structure. Now, IGNU as an institution had these ideas uh, way back and our bachelor's degree program and the, since IGNU is a national open university and large number of state open universities have come after IGNU came into being and it started its bachelor's degree program. The very name you will see that IGNU did not start with BA become BSc, IGNU started with bachelor's degree program. So the name itself indicates that we were conscious of the fact that a student should be given more liberty and in, apart from giving them basket of uh, uh, courses from various disciplines, two other important components of our bachelor's degree program was some foundation courses. Foundation courses essentially mean that compulsory courses. And in that category, languages, foundation course in humanities and social sciences and science and technology, these were mandatory of all the three streams, whether they are going to pursue BA or BCom or BSc. So that uh, notion of having some, uh, as it is envisaged in first three uh, semesters in the previous slide I was discussing, IGNU had this uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the form of foundation courses. And third, regarding employability and skill training, we had uh, this application oriented courses which was also compulsory. One has to take at least uh, certain credits whether he or she is pursuing BA, BCom or BSc from a basket of application oriented courses. And these application oriented courses were coming from different schools. See, the IGNU was in a uh, advantageous position because as on date we have around 21 schools of studies in the same campus. But even when we started, we had around 11, 12 schools of studies on the campus. So this basket of courses in application oriented courses as well as uh, development of foundation courses, it was not the outcome of a single school. Foundation courses were developed with the interaction and coming together of teachers from different schools. Similarly, application oriented courses, it was a basket in which uh, different schools gave uh, courses and they were open and available to all students of BA, BCom and BSc. So the very name uh, gives you an idea that this whole idea of giving choices and giving multidisciplinary undergraduate program to students in a, in a limited way because uh, there's uh, life skills and field internship, those were not the compulsory components in our earlier BDP program, but it was definitely a one step closer to what has been envisioned in our NEP 2020. Now what was the, this again bachelor's degree program, the unique feature was that this was the first undergraduate program offered by a university which was credit based. A credit system as you may be aware in our country was essentially the domain of uh, technical universities. Uh, primarily uh, IITs and uh, professional IIMs maybe, but IITs definitely yes. And uh, in the university system, this credit system was first introduced by IGNU way back in 1990. Now uh, with the coming of NEP, the entire undergraduate uh, program across the university are credit based. In fact, this credit concept has come into university system of uh, normal undergraduate program a few years back in 2014-15 uh, when uh, this choice based credit system came into uh, being and undergraduate programs were designed accordingly. But in case of IGNU it, is, it was uh, from day one our undergraduate program and for that matter all our programs were credit based. And uh, the, in terms of giving choices to students, it was compulsory that a student has to study minimum two disciplines and there was no bar as such, but they can study up to four disciplines. Uh, in terms of ho making our undergraduate holistic, we incorporated foundation courses as I mentioned uh, in the previous slide. For employability, it was addressed by making AOC compulsory for all students to take. And uh, all open and uh, distance learning programs are very flexible in terms of space and time. 
and formative assessment. Assessment is an another important component. I think you will recall from Professor Pandey's graph, which says that understanding is very poor, but the pass percentage is high, and that constitutes almost 50% of our undergraduates. So that's the cause of concern on which teachers have to ponder that how to make uh, assessment a, a true uh, uh, certification of the competence of the learner. So, in that regard, uh, making formative assessment uh, an integral component of assessment was also initiated by IGNU from its inception in under undergraduate and all other programs offered by the university. Now, CBCS, uh, it came in uh, 2014. That was another major restructuring of undergraduate program. But it is a, just a comparative thing. Now that uh, NEP is going to uh, give us a new curricular structure for undergraduate program. There is no need of going into the details. CBCS is not going to last for very long unless we have, uh, by the time uh, this four year undergraduate program is in place. But uh, uh, speaking from IGNU's point of view, we found that CBCS was a uh, quite restrictive compared to our earlier BDP program in terms of uh, choice of courses and then uh, BA, BCom, BSc were treated differently. For BSc, CBCS expects that you have to study three disciplines. For BA, it was only two disciplines. Then generic courses is a little ambiguous. There is no clarity what kind of, what, what is intended to be achieved by generic courses. And uh, for three years duration, you have master, uh, honors program also, and uh, BA, BCom, BSc general also with different credits. And skill courses have been uh, there, but there is no clarity that what is the intent and how one should develop skill courses, what, what learning outcomes are expected of the skill courses. But that's uh, besides the point because CBCS is going to go very soon. Now, if you map the courses, then you say that you will find that uh, our IGNUS program, first three components were already there in one form or the other, but the last two components were not there. And therein lies the challenge for open and distance learning. All institutions, whether it is dual mode institution or exclusive open and distance learning institution, incorporating last two components of four-year undergraduate program as envisaged in NEP is going to be a challenge. Why? Because uh, ODL by its very structure and nature handles large numbers. And unlike uh, conventional face-to-face uh, -face teaching institution where there is a uh, definition of teacher-student ratio, in ODL system, unfortunately, that definition is yet to come because uh, the core faculty is normally quite low and we operate, we uh, teach with the help of large uh, group of teachers across the country in higher education system who work, for us, who work on our behalf as academic counselors. So the challenge is to incorporate these two fourth and fifth component in the undergraduate program through ODL as per the NEP 2020. So these are the issues I will highlight for ODL institutions when they look for implementing the uh, vision of NEP 2020 to make their programs multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. First is of course is a matter of details that can be handled, that's not a problem. The problem will be, uh, for example, the enrollment in IGNU undergraduate program, annual enrollment in IGNU is roughly 12 lakhs. So out of those 12 lakhs, roughly 60 to 70 percent uh, students are enrolled in our undergraduate programs. So for such a large number, how to organize field projects, internship and apprenticeship is going to be a challenge. ODL institution teachers have to ponder on this fact. And then uh, next challenging thing is that with such a small core faculty, how are you going to go for a fourth year in bachelor's degree where you need to have a substantial component of research which uh, needs a uh, very close interaction between a student and a teacher to make it a meaningful research project or research training. 
Uh, next challenge for ODL institutions is that what kind of collaboration uh, they have to strike with different uh, skill and vocational centers because uh, their students are quite widespread and the students are not coming to the campus where you can have vocational and skill training centers. So you have to work out some kind of a collaborative arrangement with industry and other agencies which are expert in giving skill and vocational training to give that component uh, of uh, undergraduate program to your students. Now, this, these uh, are uh, maybe, this may become uh, restrictive uh, issues when uh, you go to your main mandate of reaching the unreached. Because if you are uh, catering to people in the remote areas, then uh, all these facilities of internship, apprenticeship and research and vocational and skill training. So it will be restrictive for people who live in remote areas. So that will be a slight deviation from the basic objective of ODL institution where they intend to reach the unreached. And of course, last but not the least is that when you are handling such large numbers, large quantities, then what methodologies you will uh, adopt as an institution to maintain the quality particularly when uh, it comes to uh, uh, incorporating these uh, new components of undergraduate program. So these are the issues uh, I think uh, which uh, ODL institutions and policy makers in ODL institutions have to think of seriously so that their undergraduate program is uh, no way inferior and it is at par with the best of the higher education institution in conventional face to face mode. So now coming to the next uh, issue which is uh, multiple entry and exit. In that context, uh, I will again refer to a document from any uh, UGC, it's available on UGC website, you can refer to it. It is called National Higher Education Qualification Framework. Of late, uh, there had been a concern at the policy level that uh, we have to benchmark our different higher education programs, whether it is in the area of vocational training or in the area of skill training. And the culmination of all this has come, uh, come into the form of a document, which is of course in the UGC website you will find that it is a draft document, but it's a good document and the final document would not be very much different. So you can refer to this. Now NEP says, I, I mentioned in passing that uh, the time a student puts in with you as undergraduate, whether it is one year which is two semesters or two years which is four semesters. So should not, and for one reason or the other, he or she wants to discontinue and leave. Then it is necessary that, it is desirable rather, it is desirable that we give them some certification. So this is about exiting system. The NEP has says that after one year of study in Chujan discipline, you give the person a certificate and the courses he or she has completed in the first two semester, that is one year, has to be uh, in, uh, at the level of five in this NHEQF document. They have, they have leveled uh, different uh, courses and every level, if a course is to be pitched at let us say level five, then they have listed in very great detail that what should be the learning outcome for this, this code, what should be the assessment methodology and things like that. So uh, after, after one year, this that level five courses if they have completed, including certain component of vocational and professional areas, then only you can give them a certificate after one year. And this certificate will enable the learner for two things. One is, that uh, he or she can come back to you after a lapse of let us say one or two years, then he or she will straightway join second year. And second is that he or she can go to any other university also and tell them that I have done this certificate, so give me admission to the second year of your undergraduate program. So that will be uh, the freedom to students with this scheme when it is implemented in our higher education system.
Same holds true for after completion of two years, he or she will be given diploma and the courses have to be in tune with what is expected in this document at level six courses. And after completion of three years, the student will get a bachelor's degree and the levels have to be commensurate with the level seven uh, courses of this document, National Higher Education Qualification Forward Framework. And four years bachelors will have two stream and they both are to be, have level eight courses. One can go towards course uh, based honors degree and another can go uh, towards a research based four year degree. So all these uh, uh, stream, both the streams in the fourth year, one will lead to honors degree, another will lead to a bachelor's degree with research. And all the courses in the fourth, fourth year has to be at the level eight of this document I am referring to. So now this multiple entry exit essentially recognizes the fact that effort a student has made must be awarded, that is one. Second is that if he, he or she comes back to the higher education institution, then his or her prior learning and certification is given due recognition so that he or she can complete his undergraduate program in the least possible time. So that is another uh, aspect and for this to happen, uh, we need to have a, you know, uh, some kind of a framework for a structure of four year undergraduate program, which is adopted by all higher education institution, universities and colleges, then only this mobility will work. So in that uh, context, it is necessary and I am very sure that uh, the regulator must be thinking on those lines. They are working on it, some kind of a broad framework for a four year undergraduate program is likely to come very soon and accordingly that will give a lot of freedom within and accordingly universities can uh, uh, design their four year undergraduate program. So I think with that I have given uh, you some idea that uh, how this uh, holistic and multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary undergraduate program can be uh, uh, implemented, executed by uh, thinking on these issues which I have highlighted in today's lecture. Thank you.